Oh, it's happy. I'm going to go in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll just open in prayer. If someone can open us in prayer, we'll begin. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord. We come to your presence, Lord, and we praise you, we worship you, Lord. At this time, I surrender this class into you, Lord Jesus. Surrender, Smith, I am. What are we going to learn? Your, Lord, you teach us through ma'am, Lord Jesus. Give us understanding, wisdom, for we can understand deeply, Lord. Thank you, Father. Once again, we praise you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, so we'll just, uh, we have the last chapter of the book. Um, so we'll try and finish it off uh, in today's class. And then tomorrow we won't have class. Um, I posted the final quiz, and some of you answered the quiz, but there was that one question um, that I changed. Uh, it was given as a multiple choice, should have been a checkbox. So I think most of you responded, but I think uh, if you have not, I, e I sent you an email with the question, yeah, with the corrected question, so you can respond with the answer. <laughs> Oh, uh, whoever's doing it now, it's already changed. But for those who did it before, I sent them an email with the question. So you can just respond, answer the question. Um, yeah, and all your final papers and all are all turned in, right? Final paper, reflection paper, all of that. So, yeah. I think we're done with the class, except for whoever needs to do the quiz. Um, also, um, I'll, I'll just confirm, but I think that you all will get like an opportunity to give feedback on class. Uh, so that will come from Pastor Nancy from the Bible College, I think. Um, so if that is coming in, please send in your feedback. If that's not coming in, I'll post something. I'll ask Pastor Nancy and I'll post uh, and you all can send in feedback. So just on uh, any ways in which we can improve, like I can uh, improve the classes, assignments, uh, anything like that. If you have feedback, will be very helpful just because we're all learning. So it's a good opportunity for us to hear from you and then look at better ways for us to do things. So yeah, that one. So I emailed you, no? You got my email. Everyone's done the quiz or uh, everyone's finished? Yeah, so you can't uh, discuss the questions here. You can <laughs> talk to me later. Okay. What's that? Have fewer assignments. <laughs> what? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've, so this is the first time I'm doing with the online e-learning, this thing. That was something I decided all <laughs> that uh, four assignments was too much. Uh, but um, I know some classes you'll have two, right? Uh, yeah. The reason why I wanted to do, I, at least I'm thinking three, is to have like a quiz type, to have a personal reflection and to have a paper. Because based on like some people do well in quizzes, some people do well in papers and presentations. So to give people an opportunity to like, yeah, yeah. So that was the idea behind it. And to have a personal aspect where you are like reflecting on the class personally, it's not just an academic or uh, so. I'm thinking three, but uh, how would three be? Is three also a lot or? Four. 
Who is for quiz? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you for feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, I tried to make it also a little less, uh, like I didn't uh, make it too complicated so that it wouldn't take a lot of time. But yeah, I think the quiz also I didn't make it too hard, I think. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that's why it's good to receive feedback because I am thinking about something and I'm doing it in a certain way. But how you all experience it is maybe different. So, yeah, by email, you can just reply <laughs> and send me an answer. OK, um, so let's go into this last chapter. Um, and there may be a lot, so we'll see how we can go through it quickly I'll just share screen sorry okay so we're talking about uh, stewarding revival uh, so how can we best steward revival um, the idea being that uh, when revival happens God comes uh, in a new way, and we want that to become the new norm, right? So we, when God uh, comes more powerfully, when his presence comes upon us, how can we then allow that to become the normal in which we function? Uh, so allowing God's presence to, uh, allowing ourselves to become a habitation for God's presence, where that glory, that presence, continues to dwell in our midst. It doesn't go away uh, because revival has ended. Okay, So that becomes the standard by which we function. And then we want to move on to glory, from glory to glory. So allow uh, God to then take us to higher places in revelation, in experiences of his presence. Um, and so that's what we're talking about in this chapter. Uh, how do we allow, how do we prepare ourselves to become that new habitation? Uh, for God's presence, and then how do we allow that to become a move of God through us into our community, to uh, to take that impact into the community. Uh, so uh, the first thing we talk about is stewardship. So how do we secure, uh, we don't want to just manage what God is doing, but we want to take hold of it, and we want to pass it on to the generations to come. Uh, we read in Matthew 13, 24 to 30, so that's the parable of uh, the farmer who sowed good seed, right? And then uh, when the crops start growing, they notice that there are weeds in the midst of the crops, and the farmer says that an enemy has planted this. Uh, but he chooses to let it grow on till the harvest time before uh, they start to take out the weeds. Right, so that, that's the same approach we'll take in dealing with when we're having a revival. Uh, there may be fleshly manifestations that happen. So some people want to take glory for themselves. Some people get very excited and they start to do things uh, just to uh, just to kind of fit in in that environment. And it's not truly the work of the Spirit happening there. So how do we differentiate between what is truly a work of the Spirit and what is a work of the flesh? Uh, to do that, we're going to have to wait to see what is the fruit that is being born. Uh, then we can deal with it. So uh, it takes us as leaders in those situations to discern what is the right time to deal with it. Uh, the flesh, the things of the flesh will fade away. The things of the Spirit will continue to bear fruit. So wait till that time where you're able to discern which, uh, how the fruit is that's coming out of what you're seeing, and then deal with it. But don't deal with it too quickly, because in the process, you might actually 
uh, stop some good work that the Holy Spirit is doing in our midst, right? So uh, a lot of misunderstandings about how the Holy Spirit moves. Uh, so when uh, in past revivals where people saw people laughing or people barking, they thought that's not the way the Holy Spirit can move. And so they cut themselves off from that revival. They refused to accept it as a work of God because it didn't appear in the way they thought it should appear. Uh, but they didn't wait to see what happened in the lives of those people. Were they truly transformed? Did they make an impact for the kingdom? All of those things. Uh, and so they lost out on experiencing what God was doing, or they didn't take part in it, they didn't receive it. Uh, so that's just an example of how we uh, can too quickly make a judgment without waiting to see the fruit of it. Um, so we look at these few points, stewarding a visitation into a habitation of God. Um, we'll read a few of the verses. Let's just start with Psalm 132, 13 to 18. For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There I will make the horn of David grow. I will prepare a lamb for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon himself his crown shall flourish. So uh, just uh, looking at that passage, God says that he himself has chosen where his dwelling place will be. And uh, that dwelling place now is the church, right? Zion in the Old Testament is the church uh, in the New Testament. And so... Uh, his presence brings with it joy, brings with it strength, dominion, uh, brings uh, prosperity in every aspect of our lives. And so that's what we are seeking out when we are saying we want to be a habitation of God. We want to see uh, that kind of blessing in the church uh, where God is truly uh, transforming every aspect of our lives. Um, and how we can do that is... There's a list of things. One is uh, dealing with sin. Okay, so we won't read, go into all of these verses. Keep the house clean. So there shouldn't be any sin in our midst, uh, especially in times of revival. Uh, we see that sin is dealt with very, very, uh, in, in ways that almost seem harsh, right? So we see when Moses uh, received the covenant, and um, there was uh, the family that talked about the money they received from selling their land, right? So they said, we've given all the money we received and uh, immediate judgment comes on them because that was a time of special revelation where God's glory was there in their midst in uh, just a way that they had never experienced before. So sin in those kinds of places is dealt with very uh, quickly and almost harshly. Uh, and so there can be no sin in God's house if God's glory is to be in uh, in our midst. So sin has to be dealt with. Uh, the second is keep the unity of the spirit. Uh, so Psalm 133 talks about uh, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity, when believers dwell together in unity. Uh, that's when God's anointing flows. That's when God's presence is amongst his people. Uh, so, dealing with any contention that's in the church, division, uh, things that are there that need to be dealt with, not shying away from it, actually addressing those things. So it's not an issue to deal with it. Like, how are we addressing those differences? How are we bringing resolutions? So if we look at the example in Acts 6, uh, where... Uh, some of the people were not receiving uh, the food, uh, and then they go to uh, the apostles to bring that up as an issue, right? It's an issue that's there, 
and it's at this time when the Holy Spirit is being poured out on the church in power, but the apostles deal with it in wisdom. So they deal with it so that unity can be restored. So it's not that there should not be any difference, there should not be any issues. It's how are we responding to those issues and how quickly are we resolving them. Uh, the third is keep a humble heart. God resists the proud. So uh, especially for the leadership to be in a place of humility. When revival comes, it is God's blessing upon us. It's not something we have done. It's not like we have earned the right to receive God's presence. So having that recognition of uh, this truly is God's grace upon us and giving God honor through all of that, through all the attention that we may get, through all the coverage that may come our way, uh, we're always giving God glory for what is happening in our midst. Uh, and uh, the next one, keep Jesus as the focus. So uh, very quickly it can become about the leader, right? When there is, when there are great things happening, everyone focuses on the leadership. Everyone's glorifying the leadership. So, how, as a leader, will you keep pointing people back to Jesus? Uh, keep uh, calling people back to Him as the focus of what is happening. Him is the reason for what we're doing, and making sure that people don't get distracted by anything else. It doesn't become about the leader, it doesn't become about the uh, signs, it doesn't become about how whatever manifestations you are seeing. Uh, it is only about Jesus, about His presence, about His glory, about what He wants to do in our midst. That should always be the focus. Uh, continue to maintain prayer that fuels revival. So don't, uh, what happens is, OK, there are going to be more people coming in, more people to minister to, more uh, activities that the church has to do as a result of revival. But don't forget to keep that core of seeking God. Uh, continue to pray, continue to seek God, uh, because that is what will uh, fuel what God wants to do, right? We'll prepare our hearts, we'll prepare the ground for God to work. Uh, but if we get lost in the activities, uh, then we are not preparing ourselves and our hearts are not ready for what God wants to do. Uh, stay with what is important. Uh, so Acts 2.42 says they continued in uh, fellowship, they continued in prayer in the teaching of the apostles, right? Uh, so don't forget to continue all of those things uh, and not to get caught up in the busyness of what is happening. Uh, so that teaching of the word has to happen. Uh, prayer has to happen. Caring for people has to happen. That we are there to minister to people. We are there to truly love people, to care for their needs. Uh, that we don't get carried away by the other things. Imagine news reporters coming in wanting to talk to you. Imagine tens of thousands of people coming in wanting to be ministered to, it's so easy to just get carried away. But how do we remember what is important in those times and stick with that, continue to maintain that? Uh, consolidate what is being released. Uh, so uh, some ways is to uh, train people, to teach people. Uh, other ways is to keep a record of what has happened. Um, so, and then the other way is to pass it on to the generations to come. Uh, so to make sure that whatever has been received is something that we are continuing in, that it's not something that will be lost in the generations to come. So how do we do that is uh, by passing that on to the succeeding generations, by keeping a record for people to remember. So that's how we are able to take these other things and. Uh, like these records of what has happened in the past, and we know what God has done, right? Uh, but training people, raising up leaders, all of those things very important. Uh, create and maintain revival culture to sustain revival. So um, let like operate in that new level. Don't go back to the ways things were happening. So uh, especially in terms of uh, when we are meeting, how are we allowing the Holy Spirit to lead the gatherings, right? 
uh, are we open to the spirit doing something different from the way we were doing it before? Uh, so sometimes we have our agendas. We have this worship for uh, 20 minutes, worship for 30 minutes, uh, prayer for 15, 20 minutes, uh, sermon for 30 minutes. And we'll do only that. We will not. No one can overshoot that time. No one can. So that shouldn't be the way we continue to function. We want to say if the Holy Spirit wants us to just continue in a time of prayer or continue in a time of worship, are we open to allowing the Holy Spirit to change our own agendas and allowing him to just do what he wants to do in our midst? Uh, so continuing to just be in that place of being spirit led, not going back to, OK, now we have to get back to the structure we had before. Uh, and so we'll just do the things the way we were doing it before. Uh, love people, take care of people. So keeping love as the core behind what we are doing, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about this, talks about all of these manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. All of that is meaningless, will have no impact, will bear no fruit if love is not uh, motivating what we are doing. So in revival, maintaining that heart of love and that heart of truly caring for the people we are ministering to, whether it's just our local congregation or people coming in from all around the world, how are we truly loving them and ministering to them uh, in that time? And then the last one is leading a revival, guard what has been committed from demonic or human attacks. Uh, so it's very uh, common that Satan will attack the work of God, right? So we'll just look at that verse, Titus 4.12. Uh, I mean, sorry, not Titus, 1 Timothy 4.16. Someone can read that for us. Yeah, so this is uh, especially for the leader, right? You have to take heed for yourself. So uh, Satan will come to a uh, attack the shepherd so that the sheep will be scattered, right? So how do we guard ourselves, guard our hearts, and other leaders who are serving with us, just making sure that everyone is in this place of watchfulness, uh, recognizing that Satan wants to hinder the work that God is doing. Uh, so we take that extra guard for ourselves, uh, maintaining our own spiritual integrity so that uh, the work doesn't stop because we fall, right? Uh, we guard ourselves so that the work continues. So uh, we won't go into this, but there is a list of things uh, from William Seymour's life as a leader that we can learn. We won't, it's a long list of points, but you all can go through that uh, if you want to look at more of how a leader guards themselves. Um, we'll close with this last part. So how do we move from God being present in our midst to then being a channel through which God's presence moves into our communities and impacts our communities? So the first is share the story to inspire others. So uh, sharing what God is doing in our midst and allowing others to hear those stories and be inspired to seek God in that way. We see so much of revival that has happened is just because of this, right? It's not that uh, the one part is people are inspired and they start to see God. One part is just through that sharing, revival just spreads, right? We've seen uh, where people went and just spoke in a church and revival happened in that church because of that testimony. Uh, so that is one way in which we can spread uh, what is happening in our midst, take it to other places. The second, find people who are ready to catch the fire. So uh, are there people who are hungry for more of God? Find those people, uh, because those are the people who will uh, truly receive it and will take it to others. Uh, so raise up leaders like that. Uh, invest in the lives of people who are in that place of uh, seeking God. Uh, third is impart in the spirit. So we want to uh, release spiritual things, right? We don't want to release practices like methods of doing things. This is the way we do it. 
this is our uh, thing. Uh, we want to release what are the spiritual revelations we've received. That is what we give, uh, we impart to people, and the way they express it in their congregations, in their communities, they can choose to do it their own way. They can choose their methods, they can choose uh, their expression of it. We want to pass on the spiritual revelation. That's what we want to uh, be very particular about. That's what we want to pass on. And then the last is release carriers of revival to take it far and wide. So send out ministers. Uh, so while revival is happening, be very intentional about raising up leaders who will then take what is happening and then take it to other places. So uh, people who will go on missions, people who will go start ministries, people who will uh, who will go spread the message to other churches, uh, evangelists. So raising up those kinds of people who will go and spread the fire. Uh, so the last thing is uh, the example of Evan Roberts, right? Uh, in 1906, he was asked, um, could another revival happen in Wales? And this, this was 20 years after the Welsh revival, which is considered one of the greatest revivals uh, because of the impact it had on the world. Uh, and Evan Roberts' question was, yes, but who will pay the price? So to be someone who can carry revival, can prepare the church for revival, it takes great, great sacrifice. So uh, as we seek that out for ourselves, as we seek that out for our communities, uh, are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to uh, sacrifice our regular lifestyles to seek the presence of God uh, for ourselves personally and for our communities? Uh, are we willing to allow God to use us uh, to impact uh, the world for his kingdom? Uh, that is something that we will need to answer for ourselves. So we've come to the end. We are finished early. <laughs> um, if there are any things you'll want to share, we can share or we can close in prayer. Any questions, thoughts? Okay, um, I'll close us in prayer and then we can end for today. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, uh, Lord, for this whole semester for giving us the opportunity to look at uh, the powerful ways in which you have moved in um, the history of the church, Lord. Uh, Lord, that you are a God who desires to uh, be in our midst. That's just an amazing thought, Lord, uh, that you who are uh, so glorious, so powerful, so mighty, uh, you want to be in our midst. You want us to carry that glory uh, in us and amongst us, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would begin to start a fire in our hearts, a hunger, a desire for more of you, um, that our desire would truly be just for you, not for uh, not for uh, the signs of your presence, not for uh, all of the wonderful things that come with your presence, but just for us to know you, to experience your presence in our midst. Give us that kind of a hunger, a desire for more of you, Lord, uh, that we will be people who are thirsty, uh, who are seeking after you, uh, always wanting more of you, even though you pour out yourself and you satisfy us, that we would always be in this place of desiring more. Um, Lord, give us the grace to uh, make the sacrifices that are needed uh, to seek you more, Lord, uh, to spend more time in prayer, to spend more time in your word, uh, to be the kind of people who uh, seek you above all things, Lord, uh, even in the midst of busyness, in the midst of distractions. Uh, there are so many things that um, are fighting for our attention, Lord, that you would uh, give us 
uh, just a supernatural desire, Lord, uh, that comes from your spirit, uh, and a supernatural ability uh, to wait on you, to be able to uh, put aside every other distraction and to just wait on you, Lord. Uh, we pray, uh, Lord, that we would grow in you, uh, that we would know you more, and that uh, you would move powerfully, Lord, in our lives and through us uh, for your name's sake. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have poured out into our lives. We pray that it will bear fruit for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you.